hard for worship. I want to say it again. This is the day that the Lord has made me rejoice and be glad in it. This is the first Sunday in the month of May, so I want to make sure that you are prepared to participate in our communion service on this morning. So I ask that you prepare those items for later on in our service. This morning, have a word of prayer. Our uh, praise team is going to uh, render praise unto the Lord, after which time we will uh, take up the communion. Then there will be another song, the song of preparation, in preparation for will, and then we will get into the preaching of the word. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from St. John's Gospel, the third chapter. The first through fifth verses. You find these words recorded. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man when he is old. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Eternal God, we thank you so much for another day, for another opportunity. God, we thank you, Lord, for how you kept us all year long, how you kept us, Lord, in the midst of this pandemic. And even now, God, we pray that your presence would fall fresh in this place. God, we pray that you would speak to us this morning like you never have before. We pray, God, that even in our living rooms, God, that we would feel the liberty of your Holy Spirit, that we might praise you, God, because you are worthy of all the praise and all the glory. We pray that your presence would be felt in this service. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
being able to come to the Lord's table. We thank you, Lord, for your body that was beaten for us. We thank you, Lord, for your blood that was shed for us. God, we come now ask that you would search our hearts. If there be anything like sin in us, Lord, we pray that you cast it away. You hear the Apostle Paul saying to the church at Corinth, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of what Jesus did. So God, we pray that you bless these elements, that as we partake of them, Lord, that our hearts would be grateful for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. The record is on that last evening that Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and said that this bread represents my body, eat ye all of it, and they did. In like manner, he took the cup and said that this cup represents my blood, which shall be shed for many, drink ye all of it, and they did. They departed.
that at the age of two years old, that uh, the, the father, who was a Pharisee, training his son in Phariseeism, would take a drop of honey and put it on the 119th Psalm and have the child to lick it so that he could say that his first words were, the word of God tastes sweet like honey to me. Uh, tradition goes on and says that not only at two years old was the child introduced to the Torah by tasting it, uh, but at the age of four that that child began to memorize Deuteronomy. Uh, tradition goes on to say that when that child got to be uh, about eight years old, then they started memorizing the Psalms and the Prophets. And from that time on to their teenage years, they would, they would memorize a Genesis through uh, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Judges, and so Nicodemus is no lightweight. Let me tell you what I'm trying to say. Nicodemus is a Pharisee, and one of the qualifications to be a Pharisee was that you had to have the Old Testament memorized. But yet, Nicodemus, for all his learning, Nicodemus, for all of his memorization of the Scripture, Nicodemus realizes that Jesus got something that I don't have. I, I, I wish somebody would talk to me. Uh, he realizes that Jesus has something that I must have missed as I was memorizing the scriptures. He comes to Jesus and says, Teacher, we know that you are a teacher sent from God. He calls him Rabbi, which is the term of an esteemed teacher. He says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent from God because nobody, nobody. He said, I've heard some good preaching before. I've heard some good teaching before, but I've never seen blind eyes coming open. He said, I've heard some good preaching and teaching before, but I've never seen dead men getting up out of the grave. Nobody has the kind of power that you have. It was his curiosity, the Bible said, that he came to Jesus at night. I can only imagine that Nicodemus went to lay down and said, I can't sleep tonight. I, 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 before the sun comes up, I got to figure out who Jesus is. Is there anybody here who can relate to what I'm talking about? I don't know what your, what your story is, but I remember my story. I had a day in my life where I realized I couldn't go another day, Chuck, until I figured out who Jesus was on my own. It's a whole lot of stuff that you can put in your mama's name. Your phone can be in your mama's name. Your car can be in your mama's name. Your light bill can be in your mama's name. But your salvation can't be in your mama's name. You got to find out who Jesus is for yourself. It was his curiosity that led to his conviction. His conviction led to the conversation. He said, I need to talk to you, Jesus. I'm thinking to myself, you've got the Old Testament memorized. And he realizes that he is a man. DeAndre, you can appreciate that. He was part of a fraternity. He was a, he, he was a Pharisee. So he was, he was down with the frat. Uh, he, 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 he had credentials, yet he realized that there's a difference for be, between being credentialed and being called. Yeah. There's a difference between having authorization and having anointing. Yeah. He, he realized that something's different about Jesus because he's doing things I've never seen anybody do to, before. So I'm I can't help but draw the conclusion that there's something I must have missed. He realizes that my credentials will get me into the kingdom. He realizes that my degrees won't get me into the kingdom. He realizes that my Rolodex, my contact list, uh, my friend circle, the people that I'm connected to, they won't get me in. Jesus got something I don't have. It's important. That you realize that he understood that Jesus was sent from God. I, I found out something. Most people who have common sense know the difference between the ordinary and miracles. Any sober minded person realizes that miracles don't happen to everybody. When you experience miracles, you ought to pause for a moment and ask yourself the question, what is God trying to tell me? Nicodemus said, I've, seen, I've been at the synagogue a long time. I hang out with heavyweight 
our theologians, we sit around and debate the Bible all the time, but I've never felt nothing like I feel when I'm around Jesus. <laughs> something stirs in my heart when I get around Jesus. He says, something's going on with this guy. And I got to figure out what it is. It was the teacher and the seeker. Uh, he was sent from God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 19, that God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. Can you think back to your testimony, to your conversion story, when, when life began to get curious, when you began to experience near misses, when things that shouldn't have happened to you happened for you, when things that should have happened to you didn't happen to you, and you found yourself saying, I don't know what God is trying to tell me, but God is trying to tell me something, because I should have been dead sleeping in my grave, but God stepped in. Yes, sir. God, God is trying to tell you something. Oh, pastor, that was then. Well, you know what I noticed? During this pandemic, God allowed you still to be here. And, 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 and let me be real clear. Those who uh, died of COVID and those who live, the only distinction between the two was the grace of God. There was not one person more worthy of living than the other. Grace has brought us safe thus far. And grace will lead us on. So you have the seeker and you have the teacher. What else was significant about this meeting that you don't want to miss? The mandate. The mandate at the meeting. Jesus says to Nicodemus in verse 3, you must be born again. Jesus says, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. You know what this tells me? Unless you're born again, it means you're spiritually blind. See, see, Nicodemus saw signs, but he still hadn't saw the Savior yet. See, Jesus said, okay, I, I hear you, Nicodemus. You, 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 you're talking about the signs that you've seen. You're talking about the fact that you know God sent me, but you still haven't acknowledged the fact that you need me. See, there's some people who like to come to church, and they like to talk about how anointed the preacher is. They like to talk about how anointed the praise team is. They like to talk about the atmosphere and the environment in the church. And it makes them feel good, but they've yet to realize that they need Jesus. And the whole point of the matter is all that we do points to the fact that you need a Savior. And I know you're asking the question, because I asked the question. Nicodemus didn't ask Jesus any questions. Not yet, anyway. He didn't say... What is my issue? Jesus said to Nicodemus, without being asked, he made an assessment of Nicodemus' needs. It's right here. Why did he say you must be born again? Well, because Jesus, according to John 2.25, Jesus knows what's in every man. I'm going to let that sit down on you for a minute. Jesus knows what's in every man. He doesn't need anybody to tell him anything. He already knows. Jesus knows our nature and he knows our needs. He knows our nature and he knows our needs. During this uh, time of staying at home, Sister Piggy and I have gotten involved in gardening. Since we know that we have no history of being green thumbs, we, we thought it would be wise for us to understand the nature of the plants that we were dealing with because we know there is no historical record of us making gardens live. Matter of fact, there's some records out there to the contrary. We hadn't, we hadn't had a plant to live past uh, two weeks in all of our history. So we thought it was very important that we understand the nature. Uh, I'm 
talking about down to the point where I'm standing in the backyard with my compass on my phone trying to figure out where the south is, where the north is, where the east is, and where the west is so I can know where the sun's going to be so I can put the stuff that need a lot of light over here and where the sun is not going to be so I can put the stuff that doesn't need a lot of light over here. Uh, you, you think I'm talking about plants, don't you? I'm talking about you. See, Jesus knows who needs light. Jesus knows who needs water. Jesus knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. Jesus knows our nature and he knows our needs. The psalmist says it this way. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I want you to notice something. Nicodemus said, you mean to tell me I can't pull out my Pharisee card and get in the kingdom? You mean to tell me I got more degrees than a thermometer and I can't get into the kingdom? You know what Paul says in Philippians 3? He says that if you want to boast, Paul says that I was born of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised on the eighth day. He said, uh, a Pharisee of Pharisees as it relates to righteousness Paul said I was blameless. See, in other words, Paul was saying before I met Jesus, I thought that my behavior was what qualified me for God's favor. You missed it. I thought that my personal righteousness is what mattered. But then Paul goes on and says, but all of this I'm talking about is the equivalent of animal waste when I got to know Jesus. Nicod what, what, what Jesus was telling to tell Nicodemus is that Nicodemus, it's good that you know the book. But understand why you've been reading the book, the book has been reading you. My Bible says in Hebrews that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Dividing the sun into the marrow and the bone of uh, discerning the very thoughts of men and that there's nothing hidden from him with whom we have to do. In other words, Jesus was trying to tell Nicodemus, it's good you've been in the church. It, 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 it's good that you got a good reputation. But can I tell you something? You have a fallen nature that, that you are dead on the inside and that God has to make you alive. You cannot even see the kingdom unless God makes you over. This word born again, it's a good word. In, in, in the Greek, it can mean again, or it can mean from above. And what Jesus is telling Nicodemus is that there's nothing within you that can make you right with God. You need something that you don't have that only I can give you that's going to make you right with God. Can you imagine that? You're an old man. Older woman, you settled, you to raise children. You got a good name, you got a good credit report, you got few few automobiles in your name, got the deed to your own property. Uh, people know your name at the bank, at the civic club, and at the housing association uh, where you live and everything. Uh, you got your own credit cards, uh, and and at the and Jesus has the audacity to say to you. That you can't make it in on your own credentials. How dare Jesus? He said, you must be born again. The word literally means made over. Made over. You don't need to be fixed up. You don't need a remodel. You need to be made Again, a friend of mine posted on Facebook. I want to give you a window into this so you can see it. A friend of mine posted on Facebook talking about the joys of technology. She said, my father had a failing heart. They could not repair it. He went into the hospital yesterday. They put a pacemaker in his chest. And he walked out to death and he's on his way home. In other words, what she was saying was what he had on the inside was irreparable. So they had to put something new on the inside in order for him to live. Jesus saying to Nicodemus that your nature is fallen, that you need to 
be regenerated. You need to start over again. It is an internal process with external implications. The requirement, you got to be born again. The reason is for eyesight and for interest. I want you to know, verse 3 and verse 5, Jesus says to Nicodemus that unless you are born again, first he says you can't even see the king. And verse 5, he said, unless you get born again, you can't even enter the kingdom. Can you see it? You, you need to be born again so that you can see it and you can enter into it. In other words, all that other stuff that you thought could meet your need, the reason why you didn't understand that it couldn't meet your need is because you couldn't even see what you had. So what happens is when we are blind, we just go and grab everything we can as much as we can trying to feel the emptiness and make ourselves feel good and then we wake up the next day as empty as we was the day before and Jesus said that once you get born again, you'll see that the stuff that you used to depend on yeah. can't satisfy God. He said, then, once you see, then you can enter. See, before you can see, you don't even know where you need to go. That's why the scripture says, man makes his plans, but God orders his steps. Aren't you glad that God took you by the hand one day and said, come on with me, little lost child? You ever find a child wandering around a store? And, and, they, and you ask them, who are you looking for? Do you know who your parent is? They don't need, they can't hardly describe them. They say, I just want my mama. So what do you do? You take that child to the customer service desk because the child don't even have enough sense because they're a child. They don't even have enough sense to go where they need to go in order to find their mama and their daddy. Jesus said, Nicodemus, listen, you've been going to the synagogue, you've been reading your Bible, but you still hadn't realized that I'm the one you've been looking for. One of the most powerful doctrines, and that is the doctrine of regeneration. Paul says in Ephesians 2, we were dead in our sins and trespasses, and God made us alive. I argue, I argue that God was drawing Nicodemus to himself through the miracles. One of the things I say all the time at United Believers Baptist Church is that every expression of love that you experience here, every expression of kindness, the gospel that we preach, the service that we do, is not to point people to us. It's to point people to Jesus. To let people know we're not in the business of making uh, uh, babies and dependents. We're in the business of making disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ People who understand I can't make it without Jesus in my life. And God, let me tell you how blind we are without him. We don't even know we need him until he opens our eyes. Right. We don't even know where to go until he shows us where to go. Jesus knows our nature. He knows our needs. I'm closing when I tell you this. This meeting that you don't want to miss is important because of the men at the meeting. You have the seeker and the teacher. It's important because of the mandate. Jesus places a demand on all of us. Stop what you're doing. Quit trying to manufacture your need and allow me to meet your need. He sees us. He knows our nature. He knows that in our flesh we cannot please God. That we must undergo a change, a spiritual change. What does it mean to come into the kingdom? It means that internally God gives me a new nature I'm born again like a baby. That's how I become a child of God. Nobody walks 
into the kingdom as an adult of God. We all walk in as children of God. But not only that, he changes our priorities. Now we are no longer the rulers of our lives. God is. We're now under kingdom rule, under kingdom authority. We are citizens of heaven and yet citizens of Baton Rouge as well. We do everything that we can on earth as pleasing unto God, knowing that ultimately our work will be measured by him. That's why the scripture says, do all things heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men as men pleasers. We serve him with all of our energy and with all of our strength because we realize that he's the one who's assessing us now. He's the one who's evaluating us now. Other people might not be able to see it. But my Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil as well as the good. Last thing I want to tell you about this meeting is the mystery at this meeting. In verse 4, Nicodemus is beyond confused now. Nicodemus says, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Most of us have been in that place. God, I want to change. How do I change? Is it a 10-step program, a 15-step program, a 20-step program? What do I need to do to fix myself? Jesus says, see, you'd have missed the whole point again. This is, let me be real, real clear. This is justification right here. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you are born again, not unless you fix yourself up. Not unless you promise not to do it again. N not unless you uh, get better. N not unless you try harder. But unless you are born again. Again, when you look at this whole phrase in the Greek, one of the interpretations is born from above. A and it has the picture in mind of how God looked down in Genesis at the earth and it said the earth was dark and void and, 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 and shapeless or without form and God spoke and said let there be light and there was. This is the same concept. Something, at, something below was dark, twisted, messed up. Something from above had to speak to it. God is speaking right now saying I can fix it. Nicodemus is scratching his head. Like, this guy is way out there. How in the world am I supposed to get my old self, climb back into my mama's stomach, and then come out again? Jesus hits him with this one now. First he told him, unless you're born again, right? Verse 5, he says, unless you born of water and the spirit, you can't even enter the kingdom of God. Remember, I told you to be born again for eyesight and for interest. You need to be able to see where you're going and need to be able to get in when you get there. Y'all missed that. You need to be able to see where you're supposed to be going. And then you need to be able to get in when you get there. So here it is. What is it that Jesus is talking about? He said, unless you are born of water and the spirit, you cannot enter the God life. You cannot become a child of God unless you go through the water and the spirit. What is he talking about? Well, water is the symbol 
Spirit is the source. Water is the spirit. Water is the symbol. Spirit is the source. He, he simply saying that the baptism that John was preaching was a symbol indicating that you need to be washed of your sin. But the symbol that washes the, but, but, but the source that washes you is the Holy Spirit. I didn't mean to go this far, but I'm about to get happy just talking about what the Lord done. Ah, uh, look at this. Jesus said, listen, Nicodemus, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but your credentials can't get you into the kingdom. You got to be called by God, regenerated by the Holy Spirit, justified by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's the reason why the Bible says in Romans 8 that what the law could not do is that it was weak in the flesh that God did by sending his son. Nicodemus said, I've done everything I'm supposed to be done. I've kept all the rules. Why can't I get in? And there's so many uh, legalists running around our churches. They've read the Bible. They ain't even curious about Jesus, but they have not accepted the fact that they need to be born again. Ephesians 2, 8 says that by grace through faith you were saved and that not of yourself. I, I'm closing when I tell you this. There was a man who was driving a brand new vehicle and it broke down on him 100 miles from the closest town. He had this OnStar system in his car. And he pushed the button and the operator came on and said, tell me what you need. He said, well, let me tell you where I am first. Uh, I'm on the side of the road. She said, just tell me what you need. He said, well, the last town I passed up, she said, just tell me what you need. He said, well, uh, I passed this big red house. Five. She said, listen, sir. I know where you are. I got a computer. You got a uh, on start. So the technology is configured where I know where you are. I know where you are. I just need you to tell me what you need. I stopped by this morning to tell somebody that not only does Jesus know where you are, Jesus knows what you need. I came to testify. It's for me that you can't afford to miss. I told you about Nicodemus meeting the Lord. And I tell my story. I came to Jesus just as I was. Okay. 